So here's the thing guys, Marvel has been on a downward spiral for a while now, ever since about 2015 on, um, things have just started getting worse and worse. So everybody's kind of given up on Marvel because every time they've asked any of the people that work for Marvel about the situation, the people, that, the employees double down and tell them that they're wrong. They tell the customer base, well, you're wrong. And if you don't like it, then there's something wrong with you, you know, so and that's the best way that you deal with a customer. That's how you deal with customers. If they come up to the front desk and they say that there's no uh, there's no ketchup on our cheeseburger, you slap that cheeseburger out of their hand. You tell them you were lucky to even get it. You know that's what you do, isn't it? Isn't am, am I right? You know that that sounds right. I don't know. I probably shouldn't run a business. But anyway, so there's this thing that they've been doing at Marvel here lately, where they've been coming out with these side stories that they don't really promote except for like two days before it comes out and uh, in it they have classic characters you know they have the classic heroes doing classic adventures on these little like six issue shorts and uh, so I think that they are pretty much finishing up Thor versus Hulk Champions of the Universe and if you haven't read that you really need to get it your kids would love it it's a very fun story classic characters talking classic ways doing classic things with classic action. I mean, it's it's the comics right there. So now they come out with this new one, and I, I got my hopes up because, you know, I've been reading Thor vs. Hulk, and I liked it, and I was like, oh, Thor, where walk the forest giants? It's a classic uh, Thor on here instead of Femme Thor, and uh, it may be good. I don't know. It may be good. Um, so let's check this out. we got the cover here. Forest, the frost giant's getting smacked right in his mouth with uh, with Ymir, and, uh, or, yeah, you're... Majir, Majorner, Majorner, Majir, the hammer. He's getting smacked in the face with a hammer. And uh, so then it, it tells you who did it. The writer is Ralph Macchio. The artist is Todd Nook. The colorist is Rochelle Rosenberg. The letter is uh, Travis Lanham. And the cover artist is Todd and Rochelle. And uh, I think the variant cover was a little bit better than this cover, but I can't remember what it looked like. But I, it seemed like I liked it better. And then they throw in uh, Journey into Mystery number uh, 112, which was Mighty Thor Fights the Hulk. And I don't really know why they did this, because they already did the Kirby uh, Kirby release of the True Believers, where they gave them away for a dollar. So I don't really know why they're putting it in here again. But it really goes to show you that they're so scared that their stuff's not going to sell, that they have to do that kind of stuff. And then they throw in there that Stan Lee was a writer and editor and penciler was Jack Kirby for that one. We know. We know. So anyway, we start the uh, story out here, and you get a classic shot. It's very Jack Kirby-ish art. You can tell that they're trying to be Jack Kirby very badly. You know, they're, they're doing their best. And it looks pretty cool. Uh, you got the Rainbow Road there. Um, it talks about a warrior has just died, and, the, you know, they're doing a memorial for him, and the son and mother, or the son and wife, are very upset and uh, you know they're they're just grieving him. Everybody's standing around grieving. And this is what I don't really understand because if they're fighting a war against the frost giants, um, wouldn't they uh, lose people all the time? I don't, I don't understand. So it didn't really make sense to me. But then we've got uh, Tyr and uh, Thor going at it back and forth. They're two brothers that are quarreling because. Uh, Tyr, you know, has sent him into battle. They got killed, and then uh, Thor's upset because he said, you should just sit me. And then he says, well, I can't just send the prince every time I need something done. You know, it doesn't make sense. So it's very classic Thor. Thor's being very arrogant and boastful. And he's, and he's throwing his anger around to everybody. And then he goes and talks to the uh, to the son, and he says, you know, one day you'll be you'll do something, okay? Just... Just take care of your mother for now, and uh, one day you'll grow up to be a great man. So you know he's he's got his he's got his good sides. Uh, 
so then he decides that he's not going to wait on his brother to do something about it. He's going to do something about it. It's just like, you know, in that movie, Thor, the first movie where he just kind of takes off on his own. It's kind of that same thing. He's going to go uh, to, to uh, what's it called? N Niflheim. He's going to go to Niflheim. And he's going to attack the Frost Giants himself. He's not waiting. So after he leaves, everybody else finds out. The, the Warriors 3 find out, and they go after him too. And I was kind of upset that they didn't have Sif in this. They should have had Sif with them. You know, she was she's a cool character. I don't know if this is before they met or what, but where's she at? Did they forget about her? But anyway, uh, so it shows him galloping into Niflheim, and he's talking about how it's weird because the snow has, like, started to come from Niflheim all the way to his realm. And, you know, it's, it's snowing when it's not supposed to be in Asgard now. And he knows something's wrong. So when he gets there, he finds a giant frost engine that they've built to basically pump snow out. And uh, then that's when he's attacked from all sides by the Frost Giants. And the Frost Giants look pretty mean. They look pretty ferocious. They're not like the normal looking Frost Giants. They look like big abominable snowmen on steroids. And they talk, <clears throat> I love the way that they talk in this comic because they talk very Asgardian and very Niflheim, like, like a, a very proper, proper and almost with rhymes when they talk. And uh, I like that because it shows that these people, the people that did the writing actually, you know, care about what they're doing. Nobody's making pop culture references. You know what I mean? So then he, he's going at it with the Frost Giants and then the Warriors 3 show up and they're all fighting them. But they're very much outnumbered. They get taken down and captured. And uh, they'll talk about that later because you're thinking, you know, how could Thor get captured? But there's a reason why they're not all as strong as they usually are. But anyway, um, they capture them. They take their horses. I was afraid they were going to eat their horses, but they just stabled them. I don't really understand why they just stabled them, but okay. You know, you got to have a reason. So they all go back to the uh, castle, and they meet the boss, the big king. And uh, <clears throat> they're telling him about what's going on. He says, I can't believe that y'all captured them. I must send a courier to uh, Asgard at once to let them know I have the prince. So they sent a, he sent a frost bird there. They got the uh, tear got the message, and he says, "Hmm, with Odin away, it falls to me to decide whether to surrender Asgard and save his most beloved son, or to fight on and risk his death." Hmm. So we've got something to lose. We've got stakes in this, you know. We're we're caring about the characters. This felt very The Hobbit, Lord of the Rings, to me because you had this little small kid. He is stowed away in the horse uh, saddle. And now he is, uh, he's, he's kind of uh, walking around as these uh, frost giants, a.k.a. orcs, trolls, you know, that kind of classic thing, are walking around and he's hiding. You know, he's trying to sneak. He's trying to get the horses out. He's trying to get to Thor and the rest of the gang. And uh, so he gets the horses out. He goes to the uh, cave to where they're being held. And he takes his sword and cuts the chains away. And uh, I, I like this part right here. Because Thor is so arrogant. He says, uh, uh, Were I not so depleted from the cursed cold native to Niflheim, I could have smashed these manacles as if they were paper. And he says, Perhaps so, Thunderer, but it is a fact that we owe our unlikely freedom to those to this slender youth. You know, it's so funny because it's like, Oh, but I could have done it myself, but thanks. You know, uh, so anyway... Uh, they break all the chains, they get loose, and then they're on the attack. He smashes his way out the door, and he finds the king and his and his uh, other frost giants and goes on the attack. And they're smashing walls, trying to get away, and uh, the giants are uh, hot on their tails. And then they get to the frost engine, and he's going to smash it. You know, he, he's uh, he's smashing pieces left and right, and then the the uh, uh, the king. What's the king's name? I can't, it's like Niflheim or uh, Odenheim or something like that. But he uh, he's uh, throwing ice spikes at him, and the the boy jumps and, and pushes Thor out of the way just in time. You know, I don't know really how he was able to push a guy five times his size out of the way. But he pushed him out of the way just in time but hurt himself. So Thor gets angry and starts smashing into the, uh, the boss man there. And uh, so now they're having an epic battle, king versus prince. And... They're going back and forth. It's getting pretty intense. And then all of a sudden, you think that Thor's been beaten. And here comes fireballs firing into the kingdom, smashing things left and right. 
And uh, then the other group is fighting uh, the forest giants, and then more fireballs come blazing in. And then we see it's actually Tyr and the army has showed up with their catapults, and he says, Tyr commands you forward, warriors. Attack for Asgard. And it's pretty awesome. So they're all... They all got like their fire lances and fire catapults. Very uh, Jack Kirby-ish. And they say, against such weapons, we must retreat. The flaming lances, they burn. How quickly you flee the raging flames that would destroy you. No, the flaming stones bring heat, accursed heat. Ha, is the strutting behemoth who would enslave all the worlds. Is this a strutting behemoth that would behave all the nine worlds? And, and it's like a... It's pretty funny because he's like, please just stop the fire. We give up. We give up. Just, just stop the fire. So he smashes the uh, snow engine. And uh, then they all, you know, it's it's one of those classic 90s comic book stories because at the end of the day, all the heroes are standing around thanking the little boy, you know, for saving the day. And then they ride off back to Asgard the end, you know. And uh, so a kid that was reading this would love this. He would say that and go, oh, I could do that, you know. And it would, he would grow up, you know, just loving superheroes. This is what we need back, guys. This is what we need back in comic books. We need this, these kind of stories. They don't have to be big, huge comic book ending events. They can just be these little adventures like this. People would pay $2.99, $3.99 to read these stories. Bring this back into the, into the, uh, to the uh, uh, continuum of the actual storylines. And it makes you wonder if they're not testing it out, doing these little stories like this, saying, hmm, let's see if anybody reads this, but let's not pub well, you know, let's, let's not promote it at all, but let's see if people read it. You know, it, it's, it's very weird. I, I don't really understand their tactics. <clears throat> it's kind of like on Ricky Bobby where uh, Magic Man was like, I don't really understand your tactics. But uh, anyway, this is a very fun comic. I say definitely give it a read. If nothing else, it'd just be a fun little afternoon of reading. You know, that's all it's meant to be. They don't have to be these life-changing things sometimes. Sometimes they can just be fun. But that's all I got to say. Tell me what you think about my review. Tell me what you think about this comic book. Uh, Ralph Machio definitely knew what he was doing. I don't know if this is like a direct copy of an older comic book, but it's fun. Uh, and I do see that the cover, they, I do see where Rochelle Rosenberg spent more time on the cover than they did on the inside because you can kind of tell by looking at the cover, the coloring is better. Uh, but it's still good. The book's still good. You know, it, it's very Jack Kirby ish, and so I give it to him for trying. But all right, guys, I've got some more reviews coming. Tell me what you think about this. Tell me what you think about Thor in general and the storyline and where they're going with it in the actual continuity. And, and tell me if you're hoping that maybe they'll bring back the original Thor. All right, guys. I'll talk to you later. Underground Geek out.